Good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are in the world, and welcome to today's webinar, the UK REACH Analysis of Potential Impact on Aerospace and Defense and its Chemical Supply Chain. My name is Madison Adams, and I work at Ascent Compliance, and I'm helping facilitate today's webinar. Um, for any of you on the line, uh, you may have uh, logged in, and, and this may be the first time you're using this webinar platform. Um, I want to just make a quick note of some of the housekeeping items, and then we'll pass it on to the presentation uh, today. All of the windows on your browser are adjustable, um, so feel free to move around the audio questions and answers and slides pane. Um, you can make them as small or big as you like. Um, if you happen to move them around or close out of them by accident, um, that very first kind of button on the bottom um, is the revert back to the original layout of the platform. That'll bring everything back to uh, what it looked like when you originally logged in this morning. Um, along the bottom, you'll also notice there is a handout slide. That's the last button on the right hand side. Um, in there, you'll be able to see um, a link to the IAG website, as well as today's presentation. Throughout the presentation, uh, you are more than welcome to answer questions. You can do so by putting questions into that question and answer box on the left hand side of your screen. Um, we will be following up with questions um, after today's webinar. And last but not least, today's presentation is being recorded. Um, so feel free to uh, to uh, be able to log back into this after the program today and, and you'll be able to um, view the presentation on demand and, and take a look through the slides. Um, so with that, I will pass it over to our IAG team members uh, to get things started. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Madison. Hi everyone. Welcome to this international aerospace environmental group webinar on, as Madison said, UK REACH and the analysis of potential impacts on the aerospace and defense industry and its chemical supply chain. My name is Lindsay Bean and I will be just introducing the topic for today's webinar. I am an environmental policy analyst for Northrop Grumman Corporation and I work within uh, Northrop Grumman's environmental sustainability team. I also serve as the communication subteam lead for IAEG's Worker 9. Um, for those that might not be familiar with IAEG, we are a nonprofit organization of global aerospace companies created to collaborate on and share innovative environmental solutions for the industry. Um, our group works to promote the development of volunteer consensus standards and to provide accessible solutions for uh, key environmental issues that are impacting our industry. So um, within that, I mentioned I'm part of work group nine. And uh, for those that you who are familiar with IAG, Workgroup 9 is chartered to review, prioritize, and develop communications for the IAEG membership on new regulations that will have an impact on aerospace and defense industry. Since the establishment of Workgroup 9 in 2019, we have released, I think it's actually 16 regulatory alerts now, um, one fact sheet, and this is our second webinar. Um, hopefully many of you have seen some of the work products that we've had from Workgroup 9 released over the years um, through direct email for those IAEG members or posted on our website at IAEG.com or perhaps through our LinkedIn communications, which we've started recently ramped up. Um, if you're interested in learning more about any of these topics, I encourage you to check out these alerts on your website or find us on LinkedIn. That's a little bit about Workgroup 9. Now, with that, I'd like to turn to the subject of today's webinar, which is focused on the UK's recent establishment of the REACH program. During this webinar, we have knowledgeable presenters who, will who we will introduce momentarily, and they will be walking us through the fact sheet um, that IAG published on the UK's new REACH program, which was established following the UK's departure from the EU, aka Brexit. Um, during the webinar, we will be focusing on the relationship between EU REACH and UK REACH, um, the transitional guidance and arrangements that the UK has developed to support substance authorization and registration between the EU and the UK's REACH programs, uh, important dates and deadlines associated with authorization and registration for REACH, um, as well as the risks that A&D and our supply chain should be aware of when conducting business in the EU and UK during the transition period as well as beyond. Um, and then following that, we'll have a question and answer session with our moderator um, and, the and the presenters that will follow. So uh, with that, please take note that the fact sheet and the webinar are being provided in good faith and have been based on the best available information that we've had. 
Um, it is to be relied upon at the user's own risk. IAG and the authors of the material make no representation or warranties with regard to its completeness, and no liability will be accepted for damages or any nature whatsoever resulting from the reuse uh, or reliance of the information included. Um, and no part of this fact sheet or webinar constitutes legal advice. Uh, so this presentation will be moderated by Marlon Moreno of Rolls-Royce, who is my fellow Workgroup 9 subteam lead. Um, Marlon, I'll turn it over to you to introduce yourself and today's speakers. Thank you, Lindsay. Hi, everyone. My name is Marlon Moreno. I am the moderator for today's webinar and will be one of the panelists in the Q&A. In IEG, I am the work of nine prioritization subteam lead and have contributed to the development of the Brexit Impact Analysis sheet in 2018. Currently, I work at Rolls-Royce as a chemical regulatory supply chain specialist. Now, I will introduce to you our presenters. Harry Griller will be one of our presenters for today's webinar. Harry just celebrated his 20th anniversary at Megit PLC where he currently works as the EU and Asia Regional HSC Lead and is the chair of the Rich and Obsolescence Workgroups within MEGIT. Carol has been a participating member of IEG since 2018 and also serves as the base chair of the UK ADS Sustainable Materials Working Group. He is also a member of the EU ASD Rich and Chemical Working Group. Now, I will introduce to you Mary. Mary Rosenberski will be presenting alongside Carol during this webinar. Mary is a member of the Global Chemical Substance Program Office at Collins Aerospace. Within IEG, she has been a valuable member of Work Brunei since it was formed in 2019. Carol and Mary, thank you both for leading this presentation today. Carol, I will turn it to you now. Thank you, Marlon, for that introduction. It uh, made me sound quite employable, actually. Welcome, everybody. I uh, hope you find this UK IAEG REACH webinar uh, fruitful. So to, to let's get our feet wet and dip in. Uh, the UK's uh, withdrawal agreement with the EU was ratified in January 2020, and the UK officially left the EU on the 31st of January 2020. Directly following the, the country's official departure, the UK entered an 11th month transition period or implementation phase, which ended on the 31st of December 2020, meaning that new chemical rules applied from 1st of January 2021. Under the European Union Withdrawal Act, the EU REACH regulation has been brought into UK law, named UK REACH, and as of the 1st of January 2021, the EU regulation no longer applied in the UK, with the exception of Northern Ireland, which continues to be subject to EU reach in accordance with the Northern Ireland Protocol. Some of the important developments of the UK's break with the EU reach is outlined on this slide. To summarise, uh, the UK and the, sorry, the EU and UK reaches regulatory systems are now independent from, from each other. Companies operating in both the EU and UK have to comply with REACH requirements for both chemical regimes. On day one, i.e. early January 2021, the EU and UK REACH candidate lists were identical. They have since diverged with EU candidate lists, including an additional two substances in mid-January. The UK candidate list contains 209 substances, uh, whereas now the EU contains 211. In relation to authorization and exporting, both the UK and EU versions are currently identical with 54 substances. However, EU REACH added seven additional substances to the 10th recommendation for authorization in April 2021, where its UK counterpart did not. So those are just two examples of regulatory divergence already. Distributors and users trading goods across the EU will have to comply with new importer obligations and also, uh, as I mentioned, the UK REACH applies in Great Britain, England, Scotland and Wales, and there are special uh, transitional arrangements for Northern Ireland, such as a light notification system, 
meaning Northern Ireland notifications will enable ongoing GB market access of existing Northern Ireland-based EU REACH registration uh, for qualifying Northern Ireland goods or QNIX. The UK REACH retains the fundamental aims and principles identified during the development of the original EU REACH programme. These include the, data, the no data, no market, the concept, uh, meaning substances should not be placed on the market without first being registered with the appropriate authority. Registrants should also only conduct animal testing as a last resort. Information collected on chemicals reported on the reach should be passed to the downstream users to ensure uh, workers have access to a critical information on the safe use and risks associated with the substance. And finally, that the precautionary principle applies to substances placed on the market, i.e. the active substances do not adversely affect human or animal health or the environment. So it's not been a direct copy and paste from EU reach to UK. Uh, the UK had to make provisions to the, uh, to the UK reach to account uh, for the disconnects that were created as a result of the newly acquired independence of the UK and to allow for the continual transboundary movement of goods. So the UK government established arrangements and guidance resources for industry and their supply chains on how to effectively transition to the new system. And the UK HSE website continues to develop along these lines and should be a first port of call for any such information. So IAEG wants to share some of the important information to give you an idea of what was transposed into the new UK regime and, and what to expect as these two um, chemical regimes continue to diverge. So as of the 31st of December at 2300 hours UK time or midnight Central European time, the following was transposed or copied into the EU, from, from EU reach, sorry, into the UK reach regime. So the, as mentioned already, the EU reach candidate list, which was 209 substances on the 1st of January, was transferred into the UK uh, reach regime. The authorization list uh, is the same as well, with 54 substances. Uh, including all sunset dates and latest application dates. Um, however, there are certain authorizations for certain substances uh, whose applications for authorization were not concluded prior to the Brexit deadline. And so there's a caveat for certain substance latest application dates and sunset dates, which is explained later on in this presentation. Restrictions on Annex 17 uh, were also transposed into UK law. Uh, again, another example of divergence here is uh, tattoo inks, uh, not necessarily relevant to the aerospace and defence sector, but tattoo inks and um, permanent makeup substances have been added to uh, EU Annex 17 since. Updates to the candidate list, Annex 14 and Annex 17 uh, in UK REACH are based on the same legal conditions and criteria as EU REACH. However, there are no obligations or commitments to maintain alignment with EU REACH uh, once UK REACH entered into force. So whilst the principle of operation is the same, um, we have started to see divergence that we've already explained. Now, this slide shows some of the major transitional arrangements that were made between the UK and the EU relating to substance registrations. <clears throat> some of the notification deadlines I refer to in this, in this slide have since passed, so please note that. The UK allowed for grandfathering of existing UK registrations under EU REACH into the new UK REACH system. The UK uh, recognised EU REACH registrations held by UK-based companies including those held by UK-based only representatives, or ORs. This also included any registration that had a relevant path connection with the U UK under Article 127A. Grandfathering allowed for basic notification to be made within the short term. That was 120 days from the 1st of January 2021. So that ended in April 2021. The basic notification then allowed for a fuller registration to be made from end of October this year, with a varying two, four, or six-year timescale, depending on the substance volume placed on the UK market and the hazardous properties of the substance in question. This is explained in a, in a further slide. 
In terms of importing chemicals into the UK, new registration requirements for companies that import chemicals to the UK from the EEA or European Economic Area. So, for example, a downstream user obtaining substances greater than a ton per annum from the EEA would be considered a, an importer and may have new certain obligations to meet. Continue to be considered a downstream user, companies must notify the HSE uh, by the end of 20, 27th of October 2021. And they remain a downstream user, and so that they can remain a downstream user by making uh, a downstream user import notification or doing. An only representative in the UK can be appointed by a non UK producer, formulator, or article manufacturer for the purpose of fulfilling importer obligations, including making doings. This is a, there is a similar uh, reciprocal mechanism as to what the EU requires. So a bit more detail on these full substance registration dates. Uh, so this is as of uh, end of October 2021. This slide pr provides the registration deadlines to be aware of uh, depending on the import tonnage band and hazardous properties of the substance. The registration window, as I say, commences from end of, uh, 27th of October 2021. So on, on the left, uh, that is the two-year full registration period, uh, taking us up to 28th of October 2023, and applies to substances placed on the UK market greater than 1,000 tonnes per annum so in other words, high volume substances or very toxic to aquatic organism substances placed on the UK market greater than 100 tonnes per annum or carcinogens, mutagens or reprotoxins, CMRs um, and any substance on the UK candidate list as of the 31st of December last year, greater than a tonne per annum. Moving on to the middle dates, the four years deadline takes us to the 28th of October 2025. This is for companies placing greater than 100 tonnes uh, to 99, sorry, to 999 tonnes of substances on the UK market, um, or UK candidate list substances as of the 27th of October 2023. So that, that's how the candidate list will be in uh, two years' time or so. And then the final uh, deadline there, the 28th of October 2027, that's the six-year deadline, are for those uh, companies placing small amounts of substances, i.e. in the region of one to 99 tonnes, on the UK market in any one year. So hopefully that will explain the fuller registration transition. Um, and then this slide is basically, the top of it summarises the UK import and notification or the doing mechanism. So for companies procuring substances, on their own in mixtures or in articles, if there is an intended release of the substance from the article, um, and, and they're getting those from E, they will be supported under the new UK REACH program and therefore may have notification obligations. The downstream users importing greater than a tonne per a year of such substances in the UK need to complete this doing, this uh, downstream user import notification based on the information available in the safety data sheet. These downstream users will also need to fully register the substance within the program, which is a, which is a reminder of the date just given. EU and EEA-based companies intending to continue placing uh, chemicals on the UK market officially become EU ex exporters. They must ensure that they are covered by a valid UK REACH registration these companies can either register the substance on the UK REACH themselves, or, uh, sorry, these companies can register these substances under uh, UK REACH through a, an only representative, that is, or an affiliate UK importer. Uh, so that is uh, if they have uh, um, an arm within the UK as such. The downstream user import notification will need to be completed by end of uh, October the 27th, 2021, under phase one of the implementation there, as you can see in the middle. For phase two, full registration is required within two, four or six years from October, 20, October the 28th uh, this year, 
uh, depending on the tonnage band or hazardous properties of the substance being imported. So there are a couple of options on how to achieve this. As a downstream user importer, you can submit a full UK REACH registration. You can actually get the EU or EEA exporter to submit a full registration uh, via a UK-based only representative, if one exists. You can switch to a UK supplier with their own UK registration, or you can lower the import below a tonne per year, all of which uh, are perfectly legal. Now, the bottom half of the slide covers the UK, um, the requirements, sorry, for the UK based holders of EU substance registrations. So that means those that have been grandfathered into, the UK, into UK reach. Uh, if the notification of intent to register was submitted to the UK HSE by April the 30th, 2021, remember that was the 120 day post implementation uh, phase deadline. Or if the notification deadline is met, then UK-based holders of the EU registrations are subsequently required to fully register under UK REACH under the same two, four, or six-year time scale as previously outlined. So a lot of, a lot of dates there, and uh, it, it is relatively complicated. That covers the top-level points of the UK REACH substance registration process. And now hand over to Mary Rosenberg here from Collins Aerospace to cover the UK REACH authorization section. Mary, over to you. Thanks so much, Carol. Thanks, every, everyone. Um, this section I'll be focusing on, on the authorizations, uh, so let's jump right in. This slide shows some of the major transitional agreements that were made between the EU and the UK as it relates to authorization. The UK plans to recognize authorizations that had been granted by the EU, but held by UK companies, also were granted to an upstream supplier in the EU. It's important to note that if an application for authorization was submitted by a UK company to the EU, and had not been granted by the end of the transition period, which was December 31st, 2020. In these instances, the UK has made provisions to support authorizations for UK companies by establishing a new sunset date and a LAD, the latest application date for authorization submitted under EU REACH before the end of the transition period and have not yet been granted by the EU. The sunset set date is June 30th, 2022. So it's important to keep that date in mind um, as you uh, move into the, into the new year next year. Entities that fit this description will be able to use the substances until June 30th, 2022, as previously mentioned. But after that date, authorizations will be required for continued use. And um, as many of you may know, or for those coming up to speed, applications for authorizations can be submitted to UK downstream users, another upstream applicant, or your OR, your only representative. And that is always a good choice to go because that takes some burden off the company by using your only representative. This slide highlights the actions and relevant dates that were set up to support authorization transitions. We recognize the date presented here as past, March 1st, 2021. So we want you to be mindful of that. It's important to know that if the group that the EC granted an authorization before the end of that transition period, you had until March 1st to provide the UK HSE with the tech technical information relating to that authorization. However, if you are an authorization holder or a downstream user and did not notify the UK HSE or of the technical details of the authorization, you need to contact them and make them aware of that information because it, again, the date has passed.
This slide here uh, will take you through um, a couple of examples, a couple of true and false for your awareness, kind of recapping a couple of the topics that we hit. So let's go through our first scenario. I am a great, a great bitten based downstream user of an existing EU reach authorization, which has been granted by the European Commission before December 31st, 2020, and held by a UK or EU EEA company. To be able to continue to use that substance in accordance with the authorization within 60 days of the end of the transition period, which we mentioned was March 1st and has passed, you need to confirm to the agency, HFC, that I am an existing authorized downstream user under EU law in relation to the substance. And you must notify the HSC with the information that is required. And that, of course, is true. We had mentioned that, that you have to contact the HSC and provide them with the data required. And then our second example here is many companies import articles to the EU and the UK and has already notified ECHA that substances listed in the candidate list are present in those articles. Therefore, we don't need to notify the UK HSE. And of course, that's false, right? You have to notify the UK HSE. So that's really the point that we're trying to drive home in this slide. All right, so uh, the next couple of things we're gonna talk about, is this really, is this really worth the risk, right? Um, as many of you know, with a, with a new regulation or a new implementation, there are risks to the industry. This slide describes some of the risks IAG members might want to consider when complying uh, with these regulations. So one of the business risks, of course, is potential chemical obsolescence issues. And these risks really come from two sources new obligations in the UK, except Northern Ireland, and changes to the existing EU obligations applying to supply from the UK, except Northern Ireland, into the EU. And if it's going into the EU, that's including Northern Ireland. So it's a little bit tricky there. You need to understand which direction you're going in. Some other key risks to consider are the re-registration costs, either in the UK or the EU. Access to the data from existing EU SIFs may be costly to registrants and require significant negotiation. Downstream users may not have the capacity to act as importers and take on the burden associated with UK registration obligations. And that's an area where you could use your only representative. Lack of access to EU REACH data since there is no data share agreement between the EU and the UK. And then, of course, we have uh, supply chain disruptions to consider, right? Overall cost for EU manufacturers may not be justified by the size of the UK market alone, resulting in substance withdrawal. Lack of transparency and registration intentions leads to supply chain impacts as well as downstream users, formulators, their failure and or inability to act as importers and register substance may impact on the availability of mixtures on the market. Uh, you also want to consider delays in gaining authorization creates business uncertainty and possibly unwillingness of the EU manufacturer to support the burden and cost in preparing a UK authorization. So there really is a lot to, a lot to consider here. Uh, we also have cost of managing obligation and two diverging lists. As you know, Carol had mentioned already, there's a slight difference in the two jurisdictions, right? Managing authorizations in two excuse me, jurisdictions with different review periods. Potential for different decision outcomes, applications for authorization under two different regimes, uh, confusion to parallel similar but non-identical regimes. We have differences in time frames and processes and decision making. So um, we really need to be cognizant of, of what's taking place in both regimes. 
lot to consider there. <clears throat> then we want to talk about uh, the UK government guidance. We have other regulations that you might want to comply with. You have your resources uh, over here on the left, your original statutory instrument, which you can uh, review for reference other regulations that you want to comply with, ROHAS, biocides, export and import of hazardous chemicals. <clears throat> so some other things for the team to consider. Thank you, Mari. As Mary mentioned, IEG has provided in this slide outside sources where you can find additional information on UK reach as well as other related chemical regulations that the UK is adopting. Now that Maril and Carol have provided the details of UK reach, we are going to answer some of the questions. The first question that we have is for Carol. I am planning to import a chemical substance into the UK for the first time. Can my company benefit from the 300-day deadline and submit the downstream user import notification? Okay. Um, no, the import notification applies only to those that were already CB downstream users or distributors in relation to the substance in the EU reach at the time of any time two years prior to the 3rd of January 2021. Thank you. The next question is for Mary. Currently, I am a downstream user of an existing EU reach authorization granted and published on the European Journal prior to December 2020. Can I continue using this substance in the UK? Thank you for the question, Marlon. Yes, you can continue using the substance in accordance with that authorization. If your company has informed that you are an existing downstream user, and as previously mentioned, you've submitted your required information to the HSE by March 1st, 2021, right? That was a couple of key takeaway points. And then, um, uh, there's a, a, an email address that could be provided to anyone on the call where the information should be uh, provided so they could just reach out for that and we could provide that email address. Thank you, Mari. The next question is for Carol. Can an only representative submit my downstream user notification under UK REACH? Uh, yes, uh, the, you can. Um, you can appoint the only representative um, based in the UK to submit your notification. That would be need to be done by the uh, end of the 27th of October. So yes, um, there is a slide on that somewhere. Thank you, Carol. And I will answer the next question. I am a UK downstream user from the triad site under the granted CTAC soup reach authorization, whose decision has been challenged in the EU. If the authorization is annulled in the EU, will it be annulled in the UK as well? And is this authorization valid in the UK? Okay, the answer to this is, the authorization is valid in the UK because its approved status was acknowledged into UK reach at the end of the Brexit transition period. And the granting decision currently is no challenge in the UK. Um, other point to take under this is that if you use any chromates in Europe or in the UK, once those authorizations are, are, are expired, you have to find a different alternative or you need to reapply for, a different, for another authorization. To do this, um, there is the ADCR consortium then you should have joined the consortium if you want your uses of chromates to continue to be used in the future if you don't find an alternative. And also, 
if you use Chromium Triad site and you haven't joined the ADCR consortium, you should be looking into join other type of consortium for your uses to be covered in the future. Thank you. Uh, the next question is for Carol. Can my company benefit from late downstream user notification if we place substances in the GV market a few days after the 27th of October 2021? Okay. Um, so the late down, so really there is no, for a late downstream user notification, uh, it's not really something that UK Reach has really said much about, to be honest. I think you would have to submit an Article 26 inquiry and a new registration to uh, UK HSE in that, in that case. Thank you, Carol. And with this, uh, we have finished for today with all the questions that we have. If there are any other questions, uh, we will answer to those uh, later uh, next week. Uh, Lindsay, I will now turn it over to you, and thank you to Carol and Mari. Marlon, and um, so this kind of wraps up our presentation for the, today. Um, I'd like to thank the presenters for providing insight into this important regulatory change that is certainly having an impact on our industry and the supply chain. Uh, and we definitely would also like to thank all of you for taking time to attend this webinar um, this morning or afternoon, wherever you are. If you'd like to see more information on the subject, subject, I would encourage you to check out the regulatory alert and the fact sheet that IAEG published on this subject. It's been listed in the resources section of the webinar. Um, and if you want to learn more about IAEG, which we're celebrating our 10th anniversary this year, and the work we do on behalf of Aerospace and Defense, Please explore the website um, as we have a number of topics, specific working groups doing really terrific and meaningful work. Um, so you can find us on LinkedIn, as I mentioned, where we post these regularly, uh, we regularly post um, other news and communications from within our organization. So um, with that, again, thank you for attending, and we hope that you all enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, following today's program, you will be able to access this webinar on demand through the same link that you joined today. Um, so yeah, feel free to review at your own convenience. Thanks again, everyone, and have a good one.